Welcome to another episode of Face in the Crowd, celebrating the extraordinary. Now today, we find ourselves chatting to Sihle Magubane. He is the owner and entrepreneur of Sihle Brews. Now we take a listen to his triumphs and tribulations and how he's managed to overcome the odds. I'm your host, Liesl Wilson. Welcome to the show. Hi, my name is Sihle Makubane. I'm the founder of Sihle's Brew Roasted Coffee. The company was established in 2012, in March 2012. Um, we roast and sell coffee to different retail stores and we also have a coffee shop that where you can ex able to experience the taste profile of your own coffee. Welcome to Face in the Crowd. We're chatting with Sihle Magubane, owner and entrepreneur of Sihle Brew. Sihle, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having us. Where did your love for coffee and the eventual uh, route of becoming a coffee barrister come from? That's when I was offered an, uh, an opportunity by Roberto Monterrey. So he offered to train me at no cost at an art festival in Hilton. So he asked if um, I need to learn about coffee, I need to relocate from Durban to Joburg. Then I've packed my bags immediately and uh, started, uh, 2003 I started, um, I, left, uh, I left, then I started my journey on coffee. Was it something you always wanted to do? I mean, what was like life like growing up for you? How does one end up as a in coffee barrister. <laughs> <laughs> I did, actually, it was by a chance. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was 16, my mother passed, um, pa passed away. So I had no choice then to juggle work and working as a gardener in Durban. And I've worked as a pizza maker. Eventually, it's when, um, when I was offered, I was available for any work that is available mm -hmm. out there just to put a food in the table. So when Roberto came through to do a job for in, in art festival in Hilton, it's when I was say, uh, uh, that was an opportunity for me because I didn't have, uh, I've already matriculated, but I knew that um, I, I don't have money to study. Then this is the uh, only thing that is exposed to me at, at that moment. I said to myself, let me take this, grab this opportunity and, and use it wisely. So I've learned, uh, since 2003, I've learned how to make coffee and I've worked on uh, different restaurants and different coffee shops. Eventually we opened concept stores for a very huge chain market and eventually um, every, that, that's how everything happened. Growing up, I mean, was it an easy childhood? What were some of your fondest memories that you can recount? Perhaps before your mom passed away and then that transition um, for you to actually have to grow up and take care of your family. Um, before my mother passed on, and as um, we had a very good memory in terms of um, um, playing and actually by profession I was an athlete so I thought that would be my career uh, as, as a long distance a long distance yeah so and playing football in in Asheville in uh, that way we used to do all the training and all that so I thought no that would be my career so eventually when when my mother passed away so everything turned around so I need to readjust everything, the sports, I need to do all of those and, and make sure that um, we put food in the table. So I hardly had, after she passed on, I hardly had um, any um, free space or time yeah. to play with um, normal friends and all that because I had to make sure that we have uh, food in the table. We, yeah. we can, we sleep like any other children that, that are out there and with, yeah, so I had to readjust um, the whole um, life. Mm. Mm. And then the transition unfolds, you're an owner now. How did Sihle's Brew come about? I mean, what, what was that journey like? Um, the journey has been um, very 
yeah, up and down. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's never been easy to start a company from scratch. And an unknown, an unknown company, it's, it's very challenging because of the, the, um, the, the, f the, the money uh, that you need for the startup money, startup capital that you need. It's never been easy. So I've juggled also, it's, it, it, it's been very rough. Um, I've juggled everything and I've risked it all. And I yeah. said to myself, let me leave my normal corporate uh, workplace and let me just venture into uh, a company that will be sustainable. So my vision was like growing a com making a company that will be sustainable in, 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 in few years uh, to come. So it was not a matter of saying, I'm starting a company to make quick cash and, and just live yeah. out of that. I remember in 2015, I was offered 2.5 million to invest in my company and I said no I don't need that I need to just grow gradually and eventually I'll be I'll reach wherever that I wanna I wanna um, I wanna be and also that 2.5 million I didn't have it on my bank account yeah. and I said to myself in order for me to grow is I need to risk it all and uh, in order for me to grow I need to put strategies and play in place in order for the company when it takes off it will be uh, sustainable and also selling the shares at, at the lower uh, prices 2.5 million and imagine in down the line in the next three four months it will it will bump up up to maybe uh, it will be having a billion ten over mm -hmm. so because if you look at the uh, coffee company in south africa or just in overall um like we're growing as a as a, as a country and we also they consume more than 22 billion uh, cups of coffee currently as we speak now in South Africa compared to 2003 whereby it was very a low margin and people were mostly a tea drinkers so you see you can see exactly the the will starting to change and it's a good business to be in in terms of um, and it is a profitable uh, business on that note I mean where can people access your products as well have you decided to expand if so where and how we already in Food Lovers Market, in six stores, selected stores, and four ways, Nicolway, Kaila, Michili on top, and Balfour Park, uh, East London, and we've already in uh, Spa, mainly in um, Pretoria area. Mm. We've already engaging with uh, one of the big company like Pick and Pay, so we're gonna start putting our product there. So most of the thing they they can also order online at www.cheshbrew.co.za under product. Then you can select your product anywhere in the world. We can able to deliver uh, using a Korea company. Mm. Chez Brew is definitely not a one man show. We managed to catch up with a few of your colleagues. This is what they had to say about you. Yeah. Yeah, when I was, uh, when it was uh, on uh, uh, first of May, so because uh, I was coming from uh, Durban, I was uh, looking for jobs. So I met this guy, uh, uh, the one who was working here. So I tried and talked to him, uh, and so say, well, hey, please, my friend, hey, can you help me out? Because I'm suffering here, wara wara wara. So after that day. Uh, he said, well, no, I got this guy here, Sisle, so if you can maybe connect with him, uh, maybe maybe contact him, maybe you can maybe get something like, I said, what, what are you actually busy about today? He said, uh, they doing a, a coffee with a coffee machine and all of those stuff and sandwiches and all. And I said, really, I wish I, I could meet this guy here so uh, I can maybe... Uh, I talk to him because I'm willing like, to do something like that. Maybe is there any training or something? He said, yes, we can try to talk to him. Eh? Maybe if you get connected, maybe he's going to try something for you. Sisla is a good guy, a calm, always wants to learn something also. Always wants to teach you something new when you don't know. 
he's patient. Yeah, that's how I can explain it. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a training, so it's quite right because I'm gaining more experience uh, as if, like, because we, you can see we're working with the machines and all. Yeah, I'm getting there because hey, actually the first time, hey, it was so hard. Like, you know, when you're doing maybe something like cappuccinos and all, uh, you have to do an art so the customers will be like, yeah, that's good. So, quite well, but now it's still like... You don't feel that because uh, he's always busy with something, but he always tells you what to do nicely. You don't feel like you are with in the boss in-house, in, in you know. You keep calm every time. <laughs> He's a kind man, he's always uh, like funny, you know. Yeah, like when you try not to do maybe those arts in a cup, in a cup, like you make maybe a small mistake, he's like, yeah, you have to keep on doing that boss call so you can be like me, you say. He's like an impressive, uh, impressive uh, man, you know. Yeah, he's a good guy, cool guy. He always teach you something new, uh, like everyone that's working here, it teach you everything that you don't know every day. So it's a, a big experience that you have. It's, it's a lot of things. Eh? Like you have to, like if you're a man, eh? you have to stand for yourself. If you're willing to be like a, a real person like he is, you have to have confidence and have passion about what you really want in life. Eh? So he always give us advices and also you mustn't think like, you will end up working here like in a coffee shop, maybe one day you have to like think, let's say one day maybe I could maybe I'll make my own coffee shop while I got the experience from Sisley. I've learned to be patient, to always trust in yourself and keep on going. Well, I can say uh, Sisley as a neighbor say, uh, please my man, keep on doing this. Yeah, maybe in future you can maybe make more people who are suffering outside there, maybe get some more jobs. The way you keep, him, keep on doing it, uh, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, he must keep on pushing the brain like he's doing uh, and trusting God. It's time for a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.